Hello everybody, how's it going? Um, oh, some dirt on my t-shirt that I've only noticed since I went to, uh, went to the big camera. Um, how's everybody doing today? I'm uh, pretty tired, but uh, other than that I'm doing pretty good. Um, yeah, I, uh, I was up in Dublin today. Um, I took a new job in my current company and starting in two weeks time I will be working from their Dublin office and uh, yeah so I was just doing some handover with um, the guy who I'm replacing uh, today so uh, I was up in Dublin so that was a bit of fun a bit more driving than uh, when where I normally work so yeah, that'll get some or take some getting used to, but uh, I'm looking forward to the new job. It should be pretty interesting. I'm not sure exactly how much of it I'm allowed to talk about, so I can't talk too much about it. But it's uh, it's kind of more aligned with the sort of stuff that I'd be working on or be interested in. Probably won't be doing a huge amount of electronics now or anything, but uh, just that kind of so, sort of side activity stuff. So... Um, yeah, so hello to the people in the chat. I see two mics. Hello to you. Uh, Gavin, Syl, and Sophie. How's everyone doing today? Um, yeah, so today I kind of didn't tweet till like two minutes ago. <laughs> but uh, what I thought we would take a look at is... So this is the... Um, this is the... LED matrix display that we were working on last week. I need to turn off autofocus. Um, let's power that up so we can see what it looks like at the moment. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to... Uh, the author of the library that I was using, uh, DDOM, or 2DOM, sorry, at 2DOM on, uh, on Twitter, if you want to check him out, uh, he, um, he updated the library to support ESP32 and I know Mike has already got it working so uh, we know that it works anyways so I thought we'd just play around with it and uh, maybe even see if we can uh, make use of the second uh, make use of the second uh, core of the ESP32 see if we can get that working because uh, I do want to show you something here with the um, ESP8266. I've been playing around with this. I will fix that autofocus now in, in two seconds. It's, uh, this is why I turn autofocus off uh, on the desk camera because it just uh, it goes haywire all the time. Um, Logitech, desk, pro no, yes, properties, configure video. Let's get rid of this one. Where's my configure video window? It's here. And let's turn off autofocus and exposure. Yeah, I can leave it zoomed out. So that was my um, that was my uh, little power supply board that I made on the last stream. Uh, I I since seen like I said on the last stream that I thought it would be stupid to like put one leg of each of these things into uh, into um one of them and leave the other leg ha hanging out but uh adafruit actually and or i don't know if it's an official adafruit one but in the learn guide from adafruit that's basically what they say to do so who am i to disagree with adafruit so you can probably skip this step that i did building this little breakout board but um yeah i, I don't know i just didn't feel like it would be super secure now they do say like use uh heat shrink or something to tidy it up afterwards. I actually don't have any heat shrink that big. Hey, it's not Leo, and uh, thanks Gavin on the uh, new job, congratulations. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I've actually wanted to work on that team for quite some time, um, and just a, an opening came up, so I uh, went for it, and I got it, which was great. It was a bit of a tough decision in turn. I liked 
the team I'm currently on. Uh, no problem with it whatsoever, but it was as kind of a standard app development role. And uh, this, uh, as I mentioned, is more kind of like working on proof of concepts of stuff and uh, a whole range of different types of technologies. And it just kind of uh, interests me. Is this plugged in? Um, no, it's not. Where is the USB cable that's plugged in? There it is. So he might have. Let's see what's going on here now. That's upside down. Um, yeah, so. Ooh, 2997. So, yeah, since last week I was playing around a little bit with the. Um, playing around a little bit with this uh, screen, and. Uh, so it's a little bit hard to see for you guys, but. Uh, maybe it's not too bad. I'm finding my webcam is doing a really bad job of capturing this. Like, I started making a video on, uh, on this screen, and my webcam is not, like, doing good at all like that is a really vibrant red on my uh on my screen and that's pretty vibrant green um i'll see if i can actually get up a photo of it um because my phone takes a better picture of it uh yeah i think you're right so i if i had something like in front of it that would probably work pretty good um, there's one picture that's not too bad. It's got a bit of telltale uh, photo compression after being uploaded to uh, Google, but other than that, it's not too bad. Uh, yeah, so let me share my screen. Screen share plus me. Let's get rid of my desk photo. Yeah, so th this photo isn't great either. It's a bit kind of faded out um and you can see the artifacting there or maybe you can't but I, I can clearly see it but that that's a better representation of the color it's still not as sharp as i see it um also got a little bit fancy and uh left out um left out these lights to kind of give like a shadow effect uh yes it's not leo i did see that link uh well i presume that was you that sent the link to me in um uh, on a, a comment uh so after we took a look at the two dom one i was going to take a look at that if we had time uh still it's just that the the two dom one i have uh like i have the code written for it already in terms of like i wouldn't need to figure out how to um how to write to the screen and stuff like I, I don't know if that would be super interesting in a uh, thing but like we could definitely try out the demos or whatever um i didn't realize arduinos had serial numbers do they none of the chinese ones do i don't think anyways I, i'm not sure blade shadow sorry i uh I have no idea. Um, yeah, so one of the problems with the uh, ESP8266 is, let's go back to desk with me. All right, so if I restart this now, so it's gonna display whatever it's displaying, connecting to Wi-Fi, brain lock, that's fine. Now watch this flicker here. Just wait for it, wait for it there. So you didn't see that as bad as I do, um, but what that is, uh, is when it's going to get the data from YouTube, it the display stops rendering properly. It kind of wobbles for want of a better word. I, get, I, I guess like the ESP8266 constantly needs to drive this display and uh, while it's making a request to get the YouTube data, Ooh, I got one more, uh, one more subscriber, so you can even see it's, uh, it's live. So we might hit three thousand on the stream, if we're lucky. Um, but uh, yeah, so kind of 
wobbles a bit like if we wait uh, another few seconds it should it should go again um so when it's fetching the data it's not able to drive the screen anymore so what would be good is if we were using the esp32 we could use one of the cores to fetch the data it flickered again there you can see it um we could use one of the cores to fetch the data and then we could use the other core to drive the display. So hopefully we can completely remove the flickering. Um, so that's what I'm hoping to do on today's stream. So uh, yeah, cool. Um, so while I'm disassembling this a small bit, my, I'm a little bit sad that I need to disassemble <laughs> this because I, I only have one of these screens. I, I think I'm gonna buy a second one. Um, but yeah, I'm in, I'm in the middle of making a video for it. Um, I just uh, I got some of it done on Thursday night, um, but I just didn't get a chance to finish it. I, I I don't know if you follow me on Twitter. It's underneath me there. Um, but I uh, I went to IKEA on Saturday and I spent all of yesterday building a wardrobe. So that was uh, fun. <laughs> but um. Yeah, so I just didn't get a chance to get back to uh, finishing that video, so hopefully I will one of the days this week. So, uh, yeah, it's not Leo. It's it's my favorite display for an Arduino at the moment, for sure. I just think it's crazy good. Uh, all in all, it probably does cost about 30 euro by the time you buy a power supply for it. Um, so 20 euro for the display itself and then another 10 euro for a decent 5 volt power supply but um, like that's not actually too bad for the type of display you get I, I think it's, it seems like good value to me but um, yeah so I need to take apart this uh, <laughs> need to take apart this wiring which I'm a little bit sad about but uh, that's fine uh, I'll leave it plugged into the um, I'll leave it plugged into the ESP8266 so hopefully I can just uh, plug it back in if I need to record any more uh, footage for the video um, yeah exactly like as in I actually um, I actually already had this 5 volt power supply for um, for a uh, uh, another thing that I call an LED matrix, um, you know, Great Scott made one with NeoPixels and dividers and uh, frosted glass at the front. I'm not sure if that is an LED matrix or... Yeah, uh, that that's what I got it for. So I'm actually after buying a couple more of them now as well. Um, speed of stuff coming from China seems to have increased for me. I have a ton of stuff in... a over in my mailbag corner. Uh, my room is an absolute mess at the moment. Uh, oh, that's, uh, that's a new table board that I want to make. Uh, yeah, I, uh, just to show you my messy room. That's a bookshelf and the far side of that is a little desk that I have my 3D printer on. And, uh, oops, there we go. Um, I want to replace both the bookshelf and that little desk with this big board that goes the entire way down from the desk I'm currently on down to the end of the room so I can put my 3D printer on it and stuff. I have a GTEC aluminium, al aluminium, aluminium, uh, i3. I don't really recommend it. Uh, it was hard to put together, to say the least. Uh, it took me like two days, and I'd be well used to assembling stuff like, and uh, it just it doesn't work great. Ha like I'm most of the problem, I would say. Um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I must uh, I must move to Germany, Michael. You seem to be getting stuff way faster. I uh. I have something in the post bag that feels like it might be that SMD board. I'm really hoping it is, um, but we'll see. Uh, I also have, yeah, so like 
ideally I wouldn't like to put out two post bag videos in a row. I'd, I'd like to mix it between like a regular video. I must color correcting there. I must fix that. Um, low light compensation. Is that what's doing it? Yep. Yeah. Nope. What is oh white balance? Let's turn that off too. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. So ideally, I would like to not put out two post bags in a row. Um, just from a like, not everybody likes post bags, so like, to just try not just be putting out the same thing over and over again. Um, so like, I'd like to put out a, a, a normal video so the display one will be next but I actually have another video kind of the stuff recorded but I don't have it cut together for um the post the box I showed at the end of the last post bag the one from uh, Sci Q. um so I've all of that recorded but I just need to cut it together and make a video so that will come out pretty shortly after the display one and then I have uh, a ton of stuff <laughs> ready to be open. So the post bag train is uh, up and chugging at the moment. Uh, yes. Okay, cool. So uh, I decided I'm going to use uh, this ESP32, which, um, uh, which I got in the last post bag, I think, or the one before that. I'm not super happy with it though uh my biggest problem with it is that uh it doesn't seem to have a five volt pin um may i, I would have thought that this v in pin is or it's not it's it's reading like one volt uh so i think it's kind of faulty but i i don't know uh I don't recommend these anyways. I've updated the description of my video to, I don't know, did I remove them from recommendation or did I even just, uh, did I even just kind of say, no, don't, uh, don't worry about it or I, I can't remember what I did. Yeah, I, I would, I would really like a Prusa Mark III. I have a problem with it. Yes, Greg. It, it does seem to be dodgy, but if the three volt works and the GPIO pins work, because I, I, I was powering the display and the ESP separately anyways, so like try make some use out of it. Um, yeah, so try. Uh, I guess I don't really need a breadboard. It's just adding an extra layer of complexity. I can just use a male to female jumper wires to go straight to these pins. Um, might make them. Oh, sorry. It's it's female to female again. So I have nice long ones of them. So I may as well use them. Yeah, I'd love a uh, Prusa Mark III. And so it is kind of expensive. Like it's a thousand euro, which if I thought I would use it a lot, I would be okay with it. I'd be ready to make that kind of an investment. But I never used the one I have enough. I've printed some stuff, and you've seen them in some of my projects. Like I used it for the, uh, for the Zelda chest project. And what else did I use it for? The cryptocurrency display. But I, I like. I, I wouldn't even really use it once a month, uh, which just you know I can't justify spending a thousand euro on something if I if I'm using it like that little. So um, yeah, I uh, I I really want a Creality CR10. I just love the thought of how easy it is to put together and it does seem to work well too um which is lower again that's like 500 uh yeah mike me and you should share a, a laser cutter <laughs> because that's another thing like it's i would love a laser cutter i'm so jealous of uh, unexpected maker he's a new video with these like cool um light up kind of side lights or table lights i guess um with his kids names on them and stuff so cool 
But again, that's something I'd use like once a month or whatever. So uh, just can't see it happening. Like, um, yeah, you see the the Mark trees are like I presume Joseph Prusa ships them from Germany, does he? Um, so I guess that I wouldn't have to pay import tax on them. I don't see why I would. Um, I'm just getting my Arduino environment up and running. I, I really need to tidy up. So I was explaining before that um, I have a few instances of the Arduino ID on my computer. Ones with different ESP8266 cores on them. And the one I had to use at the end of the video was the one with the 2.4 core. So what I do is I have, you can, you can make an Arduino uh, IDE download. Like, so if you download the zip, if you add it like a portable folder to the Arduino folder structure, it makes it portable. And I was using them as my, uh, as my two point, as yeah, to have all the different ESP8266 cores on it, um, and that's fine. But my ESP32 installation is on my main in Arduino install, so I'm gonna have to open up two different Arduino IDs to uh, one that has all my code that I've been working on for like that YouTube subscriber counter part, and then one for. Um, one that I'll actually be able to compile for an ESP32 because it's pretty slow to install the ES. Oh, my frames are all over the place, aren't they? Uh, maybe. Uh, it's fixed again. So he ships from Prague, so Czech Republic, not in the EU, right? So I'd have to pay. Or is it? It's not, right? I actually don't know. Czech Republic is in Central Europe. Yeah, so it is in the EU. Is it? Yeah. Yes, yes. Man, that's that was bad. Um the UK has not decided uh what it's gonna do when it leaves uh it hasn't decided what it's going to do when it leaves um, Europe yet. That's still up for debate and negotiation. But I am from Ireland, which will be in the EU post-Brexit. At least in the short term, and I presume in the long term too. We we get a lot of uh, we get a lot of good from <laughs> being in the EU. Um, yeah, so. That's actually uh, I I'm not super great in terms of knowledgeable on politics or whatever, but one of the biggest sticking points for um, one of the biggest sticking points for uh, Brexit is actually Ireland, because Ireland is in like there's two countries on the island of Ireland. There's Republic of Ireland, which is the one I live in. And is its own separate country to the UK. And uh, then there's Northern Ireland, which is like the top six counties in Ireland. Uh, and that's part of the UK. And so when the UK leave, there will be a chunk of Ireland that's not in the EU anymore. And that's causing problems because like f for the last like nearly 20 years or whatever, we haven't had a border uh, of any description between the two, but now we're going to need to have customs and things like that if they're not. So we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, uh, let me... I probably have my Wi-Fi details and API keys and stuff. Yes, of course I do. Um, Cool. Alright, so first things first anyways, I need to install ERA, not side, which is you can move ERA to 
you can. <laughs> You're still in the EU, so you can just move here now. Um, yeah, so, still, you're in Norway, is it? Um, sorry, I, I, I get Denmark and Norway mixed up all the time, and I know I shouldn't, but I do, because I'm ignorant. But uh, that was actually, there was a show on the radio this week. Um, okay, Dave, I'm trying to talk about politics here. We're saving, we're solving all the world's problems. Uh, ugh, let's get rid of this. Um, there, I'll scroll that out of the way. Let me just minus that. Um, screen share plus me. Uh, yeah, they were talking about how, like, the, is the, the, Norway? The Norway to Sweden, uh, border is like this perfect frictionless border and it's not exactly invisible either but uh that was going to be the one that I was based on i have a feeling i mixed the two of them up but that's fine um again right so to dom has released a, at least a couple of updates <laughs> since uh, the last time we were here so uh i need to download that uh, px matrix again must open an issue to ask him to release it. Um, but, uh, yeah. So that's fine. This is the good Arduino ID. And let's go to tool sketch. Add zip library. Recent items. Downloads. Dom. That's PX Matrix Master One. Might have to. Ugh. So I have to delete the other one first. Wouldn't you think Arduino IDE would be smart enough to just be like. Hey, it seems like you have an older one there. Do you want me to replace it with this newer one that you've just asked me to replace it with? No. I hadn't noticed before the 5 V bus line was not brought out to a pin. Yeah, so like that, like that's, I actually raised uh, an issue and then Unexpected Maker said that it doesn't break it out. And I was like, what? and looked at the documentation and saw that that was the case and I was just like that's that's crazy so I, I dropped the issue again I probably should have kept it open because of the charging stuff but uh yeah <laughs> I didn't um which it that seems crazy to me like is in why wouldn't you break out the five volt pin um Yeah. Okay, so I got the P. I've included that PX matrix now. So next thing we'll be doing is assembly. Uh, and big thanks to Mike uh, who um, tested this out and found out that there was uh, issues with it. So. Um, yeah, I'll just call out the pins to you. I don't think it's a huge benefit to seeing the GitHub page at the same time. Um, okay, so the first thing that I want to connect up is this little fellow who is R1. And that is going to be pin 13 on my ESP32. do that now. I'm also hoping that I have all the pins broken out on this smaller board. I have 13 anyway, so we're off to a good start. Right. Next one I want to look at is these guys the far side. He is uh, 
Let's ground G2. That's E, if I remember correctly. Alright, so E is pin 15. Ooh, also right beside each other. So this is this is going good so far. Right next on my list is pin A. Let's use green for pin A. And pin A is connected to pin 19. He's not right beside it. Is he broken out? He is. Very good. Oh yes, I'm doing half of this off screen. Um, yes, that is the plan, Dave Darko. We're moving to ESP32 because uh, I kind of demoed it at the start of the stream. Uh, when you're fetching data from the Wi-Fi the screen kind of wobbles for want of a better word um, so it's not ideal for kind of displaying something that fetches data from anywhere because of the wobble now it's not terrible like it's it wobbles for that one second but uh, if we could move it across onto uh, the second core then we would be golden uh, 23, 23 is here, very good, okay, next on my list here is C, yes, C. It was a pity, Dave, that your uh, breadboard didn't turn uh, pink. I actually, I didn't watch your video. I listened to the audio of it. <laughs> um, just because I was uh, I was driving. Um, but uh, it was actually it was actually not too bad. You uh, you did a good job describing what was going on. That I I felt like I followed along with it pretty good, and even that you uh, gave it a good uh, description of what they looked like at the end of it, like dirty breadboards. I must uh, go back and see does my uh, mental image uh, match my um, match uh, what was actually there. Um, I actually just broke off a random number of uh, cables. I probably should have like <laughs> picked what I wanted. Um, I'm one short, I think. Um, no, I'm actually too short. Uh, okay, so this is D uh, to the right of C. It's a gray color and D is pin five. Um, I was thinking, Dave, as well, and I don't know if it'll ruin the surprise of some of your future videos, but um, you could nearly 3D print. Uh, there's a, a plastic sticking out on that DuPont cable. It'll probably be okay. You could nearly 3D print a uh, new um, new case, right, for the breadboard, and just take the take the wires out or sorry the the contacts out um, lat is 22 so that's white one is 22 uh, this black one isn't ground it is clock which is pin 14 so no I have to go to the other side <laughs> Um guy okay there. Um so let's just grab 
two more of these. Um, so I have to do this POE, which is pin two. So yes. Um. Yeah, I. I was thinking that even if there wasn't one, it should be quick enough to kind of knock one up. What I would do as well, if it was me and I'm super lazy, so what I would do is I'd make like a breadboard with literally two columns in it or something, and just see does it print okay and like. Can I slide in the contacts all right and stuff like that? But uh, your your mileage may vary on that. So I need to connect to pin two, which is this little guy. Now I've got this green one that I need to connect to ground. Because obviously green is ground. Ground is green. Green is ground. OK, so. Uh, yeah, um, you wouldn't, probably wouldn't grip it too well either, um, but, uh, yeah, like, it, I think if you got a decent design printed up, that, like, why couldn't you, um, why couldn't you, um, Why couldn't you, uh, let's hope there's no smoke coming out of this, um, like do it for kind of nearly any size breadboard, you could scale it up or scale it down or then you could have whatever color you wanted and, oh really, that's interesting, um, you must have got lucky, so did you, I don't know, maybe one of them kind of provided a common ground for it. I don't know. Probably diode magic. Probably. Uh, like, I also noticed that the lights kind of are left on if you have the USB plugged in and not the power supply. So there's something kind of funny with the different pins anyways. So I will just get one of the examples working, I guess, would be the first thing to do. Before I start uh, messing with it, um, PX Matrix. It's only one of them that works, and I think it's this pixel time one. Um, uh, it is absolutely is upside down, <laughs> um, but that's fine. I, I'm happy enough if it works. So I need to do. This the bug question. Well, it was also a bit of a bug that it's upside down. Sixty-four by thirty-two. It's plus seventy. This at sixteen steps. I think that should be it. Did um, Mike? Did do I need to change a timer attached? It looks like you already did change it to two thousand. Oops. Or, like, that was your suggestion, wasn't it, that to change it to 2000? It looks like it made it back into the into the library. Um, try to just upload it and see what happens. Oh, I'm compiling for a Wemos. Yeah. Uh, stop. Compiling for a Wemos. No. I guess I'll just... Yeah, it's definitely going to be upside down. <laughs> um, that's fine. And if they're wrong... No, don't. Right com port. Oh yeah, this is a CH340. Gee, I'm not convinced I'm going to be able to write to it at 921600. ESP32 is slow to compile as well, or at least my version of it is. I need to update everything. 
at some stage, but uh, for tall things like this, I really need another light that's coming in from this direction because my two other lights are behind. They're kind of coming from up there. So up there and up there, but they're kind of behind this pixel time. That looks pretty good to me. So I guess, so, um, D7 instead of the turbo LED I have. I'm not sure, what's in Wanaho D7? Wanaho makes 3D printers, does it? Um, yeah, so that's upside down, but it looks fine. Um, so now what we need to do is move it to be dual core, all right? So uh, it, it looks perfectly stable to my eye. Maybe when it's changing icon, it flickers a tiny bit. I, I don't see that. What you see here, I don't I don't see that at all. I think it's just a refresh rate thing. You can probably like this is the dis the for bleh. the refresh rate. Like so, you could probably bump that up on an ESP thirty two, I would think. But anyways, that's like the one you see on. Uh, the one you see on like the ESP8266 when it's loading is like noticeably bad. Uh, oh, the re oh, it's a resin printer. Okay. Um, yeah, that's not great that it burns out so quickly. Yeah, I'm sure you could. I have no familiarity with them at all, though. Um, Yeah, I think that must be like a multiplexing thing or something. I think it's just a refresh rate anyways. But so if we look through at what the the code is doing here, so it does some setup and blah 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 blah. Uh there is a display ticker. Right. So a ticker as far as I know is like almost like a timer or like a like a, I want this thing to happen every whatever like as fast as I can or wh whatever the ticker is set for it and it, it will do an interrupt as well um, so like it's saying here that I want to attach a, I want to attach a an interrupt, I guess, like every, I presume this is second, so every two milliseconds I want to run display updater. And then it's kind of the same thing for this attach interrupt and timer alarm, right? It's saying like every, is this nanoseconds? So if it's so much different than that. But anyways, what I think, uh, I think if we're running it on the two different cores, I don't think I need those timers because the timer is to it or is it nah, is there to allow it to do other stuff and then like run the timer when it needs. But if I have a dedicated core running just for this display, then maybe I don't need anything to do with timers. I can just like have a while loop and let it just feed the display as much as possible. So we'll see how that works out. Um, so if you, let me just not share my screen for a second and uh, see, do I have my, no, I have nothing in here. It's all in secret.h. Let me create secret.h. Uh, in this pixel time example. Yes, we'll save as 
ESP32 matrix um, new tab secret.h cool save Just one second now okay I can bring you back in I think okay so I don't I'm not even going to start with anything Wi-Fi at the moment. I'm literally just going to try move the example um, onto the second core. So the first thing I need to do is include secret.h. So if, uh, let me throw that into the chat. If I made a video before, I'm sure most of you have seen it now, but uh, I've made a video before of like how to do dual core stuff on the ESP32. It's heavily inspired by Andres Spies' video <laughs> on how to do dual core on the ESP32. My YouTube dashboard is not loading. Oh, here we go. Um, use both cores of ESP32. It was the 20th of February. It doesn't feel like that long ago. Um, so that's that uh, ESP32 dual core video. Um, just if you want to check that out to see what I'm doing. Um, okay, so let's pull in. This is the code for the um, demo that didn't go great at the Hackaday Unconference. But, um, uh, it, it actually works fine. I just had internet issues at the time, so I swear. Uh, yeah, um, cool. I I think I can get away with not having it though. We'll we'll see how that works out. I could be completely wrong. So I need this task, anyways. So let's grab that task, and we'll put that above the setup. So that's uh, what's needed for the dual coreness and then I'm going to have this void display drive display that's going to be the same um, so, well it's not going to be the same but it'll uh, it has that void star parameter so that's a requirement and it also needs an endless while loop in it so I think that should be good um, yeah, I'll have to think about how I want to do this next part. The loop clear display, it does a delay for 3000 seconds. Okay, that's fine. I'll look after that now in a second. I'll look after it right now. Um, so I am going to get rid of this thing. Timer mux increment the counter and set the time of ISR. I wonder do I need that? I'm going to assume I don't. Uh, so while true display display. 70 and then hey build a bore how's it going um so i'm probably just need some form of a timer or whatever in this so let's uh grab that i have an example of one here somewhere yeah unsigned long this will do um If unsigned long is time for display update, I guess. So let's throw an unsigned long called display update up here. Uh, display update. Let's uh, equal to zero. Um, let's give that that. 
display update is equal to time now plus 3000. So this is just giving me a timer that every 3000 milliseconds it's going to kick in that I want to do this. So, uh, yeah. Uh. Oh, cool. Um, are you are you streaming as well? Um, what uh, what printer are you working on? Um, okay, so that should give me this. Let's grab this stuff. Um, oh, very nice. I'm super jealous. We were actually talking about the Prusa Mark III earlier. Uh, one of the guys that uh, also does streaming. He, he streams on YouTube, but... Um, he got his Prusa delivered uh, yesterday, I think, or at least he was expecting delivery of it. So, uh, yeah, we're super jealous. <laughs> um, then we were asking whether uh, we get charged import duty on it. Uh, I think, yeah, in the EU we shouldn't if it ships from uh, ships from the Czech Republic. But uh, yeah, I think I think if I was getting one, I would um. I just buy buy the the built one, um, just because like how how long it took me to make my current three D printer. I I also feel like I'd just be happy to like, just receive a working one and, yeah, just be good to go, like, another. You're in the U S. Is it? Yeah. Like another thing that I like the the auto leveling or whatever that is, where it's just like. You can print whatever, and it'll automatically adjust. I was like, oh. Um, yeah. Uh, no, I'm jealous. <laughs> uh, how did the finals go? Are, are you finished uh, college now, or is, do you have still more to do? Um, okay, so this is my display code. So if it is due to display update, it'll do whatever that's doing at the moment um, so that's fine um, yeah I don't blame you whatsoever on that um, okay okay I need to go back here and uh, dual core ESP32 I need to do this part, which is the dual core magic. Um, so I'll just do it at the end of my setup. I'll do it here. Um, so after the delay for three seconds, just to display whatever was here before, what is it, uh, pixel time, um, it'll call the drive display function. I don't know if I'll need to increase the stack size of task, I'm not sure, uh, priority of task, but the, the important one is this zero. So the Arduino stuff runs on, uh, the Arduino stuff runs on core one, which I was surprised about, but, uh, so that means core zero is the freely available one so that if you want to run stuff that doesn't interfere with the Arduino loop, you run it on core zero. Um, okay, that's probably good to go. What do we think? Is it going to work? I don't know why I made a secret that hitch because I didn't even enable any... Uh, I didn't even enable any uh, uh, Wi-Fi stuff, but anyways, well, let's comment out that. Um, I'd imagine you are much better at three D printing than I am, <laughs> which uh, wouldn't wouldn't be hard. Um, Icon index is not declared in scope. 
Okay, I think that can't be below. Um, which might actually be a problem for a few things. All right, cool. Um, do you do um, do you do much other kind of maker stuff? So build a board, just if you were searching for the maker tag or whatever. I kind of actually forgot what tags I put on this. I think I've Arduino programming and maker. I I didn't know if that. I thought that was a decent enough representation of what I did, but I, I didn't know. So uh, yeah, it's interesting. Um, it's interesting as well to see kind of how the tags work on Twitch. I I think for just like searching for random stuff, are, um, I think Twitch does a much better job at it. I, I, I don't know than YouTube in terms of like, you're kind of like, okay, I want to like, so yours are 3D printer or 3D print or whatever. So like, you're like, oh, I'm in the mood to look at other 3D print stuff. And, you know, the tags seem to work really well. I feel like YouTube is super noisy. Uh, this seems to be working okay, doesn't it? Hmm, bit flickery. It's flickered a couple of times. Just around the time where it needs to change, actually, it flickers. So, do I... Did I bring in something that I wasn't meant to? See you, Dev. Thank you for joining. Um, or maybe I need this port. What is this timer, Mux? Let's find that. I have no idea. Yeah, it it seems when it's drawing this stuff. Oh, thank you for the follow, give hug. My uh, my PC is broken at the moment. There's something wrong with my sound. Um, so I have a USB headset. That's like the main one I'd use anyways. But like for streams or whatever, I would like just play through my speakers because I want to hear like the notifications. So. Because that's not working, I just have my headphones turned up really loud. That's definitely going to deafen me later. Um, so you can see here that it displays fine other than when it seems to switch. It was okay at that time. But that time, you see, it was terrible. Although that wasn't when it was switching, so I'm not 100% sure what is going going on increment the counter and set the time of ISR see this is the problem with not knowing enough about what you're doing I don't know what's wrong though port enter critical ISR okay so that's kind of saying I can't get just pulled away from this, maybe? Um, I'm not 100% sure, Gavin. So, in Andreas' video, he said he suspected the Wi-Fi happened on Core Zero, but I have done it before for that um I have done it before that um I had the you know those 8 by 8 uh matrices the um yeah the 8 by 8 by 8 matrix modules the one that have four of them together I had that that it was scrolling the text excuse me, on core zero, and it was fetching the data on core one, so, yeah, maybe, 
be that is the way to go if I swap it around that I fetch the data on core zero that might work it's it's definitely significantly worse than before I started um, is there anything on the console let's check Uh, oh, yeah, it's task watchdog. The following task did not reset the watchdog in time. Okay. Hmm. I don't... Yeah, okay, so... Okay, so every time I get that weird colored display, this task watchdog got triggered is happening. So, am I in an infinite loop or anything? Uh, no, X is getting incremented. Time now is greater than this. Maybe this is just taking too long. Um, let's see. Did. Andreas ever talk about the watchdogs of tasks? Task watchdog got triggered. So ESP32 task watchdog. Let's see if we can. Uh... Yeah. Configure to thousand. It's good trade off between ISR. I just, I don't know, that seems funny to me because I used to. Like Andreas in his video says to put an infinite while loop in the. Or he, he does an infinite for loop. But it doesn't matter really. Um in the watch or in the task but I don't remember getting these task watchdog idle CPU zero do I need to yield or something maybe um There's watchdog stuff on, uh, I think this is their main, not Arduino, I think this is just their regular API. Is it to do with my loop being empty? Yes, it's on her. In the sketch above, loop function is empty. I had to search a long time to find out how to avoid this error message. The idea is to apply a default watchdog feed in order to avoid this error reporting when the loop function is empty. I think it wouldn't defeat the purpose of the watchdog as the code instruction. Inside the loop functions are executed sequentially, the code hangs up. So if I just put a delay in or something? But it's the other one that kicks off. Uh, yeah, okay. I guess I can put a yield in here and see what happens. Uh, and also, no, I won't do anything else. Okay, I'll try to upload that. Um, who is, sorry, it, the, the text on my screen is red for your name. What is it? Uh, build a board, sorry. Uh, I stream every Monday um, at this time. Uh, and I also stream on Saturday mornings, most Saturdays. So it'll be Saturday morning 
it'd be like oh, depends on where you are in the US but it's not gonna happen uh, not gonna happen for uh, you I would say uh, like I stream at 8 o'clock in the morning Irish time which is uh, like even I guess in uh, Boston time that's like 3 o'clock cool Eastern yeah so Three o'clock in the morning on uh, on Friday night, if you want to Friday night Saturday morning, if you want to join me for some beginner Arduino stuff. Um, so V task delay. Um, v task delay in here, Mike, is it? And uh, I guess I'll put a yield. In. I can put anything I want in here since it's not doing anything. Let's put a silly delay. See if this will make a difference. Ugh. Oh no, VTAS delay. It expects a ticker type. Outside the three second block. Oh, uh, yeah, maybe it should go outside this three second block. Actually, you're right. Um, V test to load time. Okay, cool. Uh, and I think you're right. It probably should go outside the. Let's see how it goes. I don't know if you're noticing how many times it's failing and I'm just like clicking upload again and again and again. <laughs> brute force. It seems to be patting the watchdog, but that is uh, way worse than it was. So let's try to set that V task uh, delay to be one, I guess. Let's see, does that make any difference? Like, I can see that as well as ye can in terms of, like I was saying before that I couldn't see the flicker, I, I can see the flicker. <laughs> okay, that looks, that looks perfect in real life, a mm, little bit of flicker on the blue here, not the same as ye can see. But oh, crashed. No, it still triggered the watchdog. Seems to be a bit of a bust. Also, I don't know how it's going straight to drive the display. Delta timer. Like, why is it drawn that straight away? It should be drawn... This. My sign, blah, 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 blah. Because there's a delay, and then it does this create pin task to core. So why, when I reset it, does it go straight into that thing? It's kind of interesting, and it's broken again. Oh, because I never updated the display until... Uh, I never update the display until after um, after three seconds is up. So let's get rid of that. It's still crashing or something. So 
looks like a bit of a bust. Like that looks pretty good. My god, I'm burning my eyes looking at it. <laughs> That looks fine. Is the watchdog still crouching? No, no watchdog crashing at the moment. I guess we could bring in fetching some data now. Sure, let's fetch some data. Uh, let's fetch. What do we fetch? I do. I haven't been into my local book. No, not book. What's it called? A stationary press? What's it? <laughs> I can't think of its name. Um, yes, stationary press. That'll do fine. Um, okay, let's grab. Uh, if I grab something like Coin Market Cap, I don't need to. Uh, yeah, so that's actually in the code and you can see it being dimmer so what's happening there as far as i can tell so you can see here it's drawn a line here's the different colors uh it's multiplying the brightness of the led by its index so it's starting dim and getting brighter and brighter and brighter but so how how it's making that one be dimmer than that one is PWM and uh like so I guess this one is just on less so it's given more opportunity to for the camera to miss it. Yeah, like uh, I actually was kinda like does that get dimmer as it goes across? And uh, it does. Uh, um Alright Bill the Boar, thanks for joining. Uh good luck with your stream if you're starting now. Um, book station. That's not what it's called either. What? What is uh? What is a shop that sells books called uh books and stationery and that sort of stuff? Um, like pencils and things. There is a name for it, and I just can't think of it. Uh, anyways, so coin market cap. Uh, is. A nice API to use because I don't need any API keys or anything. Um, so I need to pull in all this crap. Stationers. Is that what it's called? I feel like there's something I'm missing out on. Thanks for the follow, Build a Boar. Maybe it is stationary. Must be. Don't know. <laughs> Let's not get caught up on it. Bookshop. It's not what I was looking for either, but uh, it'll do. I'm obviously just quite tired. Yeah, that's. Uh, we don't have either of those, but yeah, they're the well more probably like W H. Yeah, I suppose like W H Smith. So uh, where am I putting these now? I put them down there for no reason. No 
and then they put these above the setup. So I'm just copy and pasting the stuff over from the ESP32 example. It's coin market cap library. I can bring all this stuff loot. Uh, I need to put Wi Fi stuff in my sketch now. That in here. Um, two seconds to take you off screen to figure out what I uh, called uh, my Wi Fi parameters. Okay, I can bring you back now. Um, what else do I need in here? So that's that setup stuff. Print ticker data. I guess I, I don't really even need to display the data. I just want to see does it interfere with it. Yeah, I probably won't stream for too much longer. It's because I'm pretty tired. Um, so this is the print ticker data. It's not, I need more, more stuff. I need this print ticker data. This was a bad example by me. Print ticker data is also fetching the ticker data. Feels like that should be two separate methods, but uh, anyways. Um, okay, cool. So I really should be displaying the data, but that's fine. We won't bother. <laughs> Not yet. We'll see. Does it work? So all we're doing here is we're just adding in an extra distraction for the CPU, basically. And we want to see, does it keep doing what it's doing here? Uh, you know, I don't really care. Was anybody working on anything cool over the weekend? Us uh, Europeans are, I presume it was pretty good all over Europe. Um, uh, the weather was super nice in Ireland on Friday and Saturday. Friday I cooked uh, some pizza on a barbecue. Uh, it was good. I made a Bit of a, bit of a, I don't know, boo boo with the. I made the dough and it didn't turn out great, but I just couldn't get it like flat enough. Uh, yeah, I still. You must have the weather that we had uh, on Saturday, so we can tell you the future in terms of weather. That's interesting. It seems way duller. It's definitely duller, and there is imperfections happening. That's interesting. I don't know exactly what's going on, but it's it's not working right anymore. Since we started connecting to the Wi-Fi, I guess so. That could that could uh, kind of lean weight that Wi-Fi is running on core zero. Uh, so, oh, it's after getting bright now. Yeah, it's, it's way worse. And now it's after getting dark. It's way worse since I am, um, since I added the Wi-Fi stuff. So I guess that the Wi-Fi stuff is running on on Core Zero. So what if I swapped it around? Let's try that before I finish up. Um, so I need to bring back in stuff from the original example now. Uh, PX matrix pixel time. 
Um, so if I bring back in stuff from the original example with the timer and things like that, and uh, put the fetching of the data on uh, zero and see what happens. So I probably need all of this stuff. Uh, ESP32 metric. So this is set up you uh, display. I get rid of this. No, I want to delay, but I want to move the task. Create a higher. Um, and I want to I already had a three second delay here so let me let's get rid of this display while true blah 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 I'm just gonna fetch one thing, so I'll fetch Ethereum. And let's fetch Bitcoin because I know I can spell that. Uh, Bitcoin, and I'll print a response or two. Blah 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 blah. blah. I'm not sure, I could print all the responses. <laughs> Actually, I suppose I should grab the error check as well. Uh, where are we? Here. I don't know if we need this V task delay anymore, but it doesn't matter. We'll keep it there. Um, so that means now we should be fetching the data on the other core. That's cool. We don't need to do it in here anymore but now we need to bring in what was in the loop and all this stuff draw a wetter icon um, yeah I guess we got lucky that we got it at the weekend um, I have no idea if this will compile <laughs> I've been hacking away at stuff and trying to piece it back together. I'm just not sure. API was not defined. Okay, so I need to define API up higher. Okie dokie. Single double. Or could have two of them, do I? Oh yeah, I moved both of them up here, did I? Yeah. Let's get rid of that. Icon index. Is that also down here? Yep. New okie dokie. Give me more cores. I know you have one of the most powerful microcontrollers on the market. Give me another one. I wonder what it means when this blue line happens, because it seems to be happening a bit. Use this glue stick as a diffuser. Fatal invalid waiting for a flash header. I think that just means I need to click the upload button harder. failing again. I'll just reset it and uh, try again. 
this doesn't seem to be a, a code issue, it just isn't flashing. Oh, script index is out of range. Selected serial port failed to execute the script ESP2. Does not exist or the board is not connected. Port is there. I dropped the upload speed. Let's see, does that help? The 926150 or whatever upload speed that I was using there is often a bit of a stretch for the CH340G uh, rectangular chip. The only problem is that when you change the even the upload speed, it uh, recompiles everything. So, <laughs> kind of slow. Um, Yeah, I have a couple of a uh, couple of projects upcoming that uh, I was waiting on stuff for, and now I have stuff for them. So um, hopefully, if I get a bit of a run at stuff, I'll uh, have some cool new projects for you guys soon enough. It seemed to get a bit further, but it seems to be stuck at writing three percent. Wonder have I broken the board or something? Oh no, it's just not scrolling. Um, I was wondering had I like, I don't know, from running two things on the two different cores all the time had I broken something, but uh, seems like we're doing okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think they're really nice. I wouldn't let my troubles with the ESP32 <laughs> on them uh, Butter, you Ugh, that looks pretty horrible. Stack overflow has been detected. Okay, I think I haven't don't have enough memory allocated to it, maybe. Ooh. Nine six hundred. I can only imagine how slow that is. I'm gonna just try this. I don't know. It's complaining of. Uh, what was it complaining of? Uh, it's gone now. Um, it was complaining of a stack overflow on core zero. So, you know, previously anything I did on core zero didn't use a lot of memory. Like this seems to allocate a certain amount of stack memory for it while the like fetching data is pretty stack heavy so I might need to bump that up even more than this oh excuse me I don't know how much memory I have available to me I think I have a good bit Okay, so that's working now. It's fetching data way too fast. Oh, yeah. No wonder it's fetching data way too fast. It doesn't ever uh, update this. Update is equal to. Can we get banned from this service now? Time no plus. I don't know. Let's say. Twenty. Twenty seconds. Yeah, it's just I've no delay, and the API says don't make more than a certain amount of requests per minute. 
and I'm like way exceeding that at the moment. <laughs> but at least it proves out that uh, it can fetch that data. So that's that's working better, I would say. Well, the brightness still seems to be changing a bit. Well, now it's uploading something new, so. Yeah, it's, it seemed to be working better. We'll just see, does the brightness uh, cause any uh, issues? So then, like, to pass the data between the two different um, the two different cores, you can just use a global variable that, like, when this thing fetches the data, it'll set that global variable, and that global variable is what the screen draws out. Um, that seems to work okay. 100%. It looked better, anyways. Like, that's fine. That's fine, 100%. It seems to. It seems to change kind of brightness when it changes icon. I don't know what I was doing that before. That that could be just you know it has more stuff to draw now like it you know uh, like when it's not changing the icon it's just refreshing what's on the screen already. I I think that's okay though. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's uh, I think that looks pretty good. So. We're doing it the opposite way around than what I've been doing it before. So we're doing the fetching of the data on core zero and we're using core one to drive the display. Uh, one of the main things I had to change was um, bump this stack size up. As you're writing from one core and only reading from the other. Um, yeah, I... I think so. I haven't had any issues with it. So if anybody's wondering, I'm not great at like lower level stuff, but what a semaphore is, is basically like a lock that says, uh, I have this piece of memory or this variable or whatever. And while I have this semaphore, I have the only key. So nobody else can write to it. So you can't manipulated while I'm using this so um, but I think you're right in terms of like if one is writing to it and one of them is reading from it I don't think there's a problem like the problem would be if both of them are trying to write to it and they're colliding with each other I, I haven't ran into any issues but in uh, Andreas's video he does talk about using semaphores and stuff but I, I haven't used them up to this point and I've gotten away with it for want of a better word, like the the demo that I started out with has like this was doing a lot of fetching of data and passing it between the cores and stuff, and it was fine. So I think we should be okay. You could have the display with half one image and half the display of the old one. Um, I don't, I don't think so. Uh. What I was doing in this one, and I'll show you here, is that, um, excuse me, so when the time expires in core one, so in the regular loop, it would do this get whatever data is in the switch statement. And so, say if we look at the telegram, well, the telegram one's busy, so let's look at YouTube stats. Um, so it would do go get the data and then it would set this variable YouTube subs to have uh, the value of the subscriber count. And then it would set this new data flag to equal true. And it was that new data flag in the drive display uh, function that basically told it to, uh, to kick off. So I am actually writing to that new data flag in both places. So that could be a problem. Um, but, uh, 
so it will like it will only update and like th these were only happening every like minute as well so it wasn't like there would ever be a case where the youtube stats were uploaded twice before um before this drive display happened because this drive display is happening all the time like is in less than a millisecond while the youtube stats were updating every like 60 seconds so they were never going to collide in terms of displaying two different types of data because the data was only ever updated uh when this new data flag was set um yeah Okay, I think this is it. I kind of have a sore throat, so I can't, uh, I can't keep talking um, for too much longer. I think so. Uh, yeah, th uh, thanks for joining, everybody. Hopefully, I'll get a video up on the screen. I'll probably just focus on the ESP eight two six six stuff. I I might mention in the video about the ESP thirty two and how we were looking at it, and you know how we could do the dual core stuff. Um, but I'll probably save going into more details about that um, in, in a later date. Uh, yeah, I'll try to fuse the display. Um, I have some uh, Opal acrylic, so I'll uh, I'll try stick that to the front of it or something. So hopefully you can see that. Um, in person, it looks perfect. There's no issues with it whatsoever. So like. To be usable, you don't need to dis uh, diffuse it, but uh, yeah, for camera, it would be a good idea to diffuse it for sure. Yeah, so I'm going to finish up, um, as I said, uh, thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, next Monday, we'll be back again with another episode of Making Monday or whatever this is called, Maker Monday. Um, yeah, and keep an eye out for videos on YouTube. And if you want to hear more of my ramblings, well, you won't hear me ramble, but if you want to see more of my ramblings, you should follow me on Twitter. And uh, that's it. Um, thanks, Gavin. Thanks, Leo. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Mike. And thanks to everybody else who joined. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>